Well, good evening. It is Wednesday night. The last night of our revival. Y'all do realize that it doesn't matter if revival services are over. Revival doesn't have to stop. Revival's got to be a personal experience every day with Jesus. Amen? Reviving your soul. And whether we have a hundred or ten or whatever, it doesn't matter as long as Jesus, Jesus shows up because he revives us. So let's just take tonight and let's just focus one more night on being revived. And God is going to meet us here. Let's all stand. Father, we thank you that we can truly be revived, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you've been speaking life into our hearts. And Lord, I thank you that I'm going to go forward no matter what, Lord. I'm going to go forward and not backwards. Lord, the word is timely for me. I know it's timely for many that are here tonight, Lord, that we were going to go forward, not backwards. It's easy sometimes to give up. Can you may relate to that? It's easy to give up. When the pressures come against you, when things come against you, when stress comes against you, it's just easy just to stop. But we know we have a hope and promise in Jesus Christ. If we do not give up, if we quit, keep pressing forward and don't quit, we will receive that eternal prize. Hallelujah. Father, I'm going to run the race that's set before me. I don't care how hard it gets sometimes or how much we struggle. I'm going to run this race with perseverance. And Lord, I'm going to trust that you're going to see us through. Tonight will be no different. We come to worship you, to lift up the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord God, to have your way in this house tonight. We ask you, Lord God, to anoint this worship team as we enter into worship. And Brother Hansi, touch him again mightily tonight that he would bring us this word fresh from heaven, Father. Lord, I just ask you to bless this service, to have your way in this house tonight. And it's in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, amen. amen. Let's worship the Lord.
power, power, wonder world is power in the blood of the Lamb. If there is power, power, wonder world is power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you to serve us for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood.
glad you can come as you are. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you that we can worship you, Lord God. I thank you for this worship team, Lord, that allows us to and leads us into the presence of Almighty God. And I thank you, Lord, that we can truly come as we are. And you will openly receive us, Father. We love you and we praise you. And it's in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Y'all give the worship team a hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to go take up an offering again. We'll be few in numbers. God is multiplying his money. I'm, I'm surprised, honestly, how much God continues just to bless. Amen. And we're going to give you an opportunity to be a blessing to Hamzi and Jeanette. But this is a chance to sow into fertile ground. So if I could get a couple of ushers, tonight we're going to pass the offering plate four times. So get ready for four passes. The color's like, you're kidding me, Pastor. You're not going to do it four times. No, it just counts. Hallelujah. Brother David, would you bless the offering tonight? Father, we're thankful, Lord, to be in your house tonight, Lord God. We're thankful, Father God, to honor you, Lord God, and to gather together, Father. We just praise you and thank you. Father, we ask you to bless this time and this place together, Lord God. We just ask we come, Lord, to yield and to just plan in your kingdom, Father God. We just ask you, Lord, to bless these gifts, Lord, bless the giver, Lord God. We just pray, Father God, that you raise the work in each one of us, Father, and it's a hundredfold blessing, Father, that work in each one of us all the time, Lord, we pray in Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 As they're passing the offering plate, oh, I see some more cars just pulled in the parking lot. I don't know if we, you got your key, brother? Okay, I think somebody just pulled up. We want to let them in, amen, if that, well, they may just be passing through. Do it a U-turn. Either way, I saw headlights, amen. Everybody been blessed this week? Amen. amen. Isn't it great to hear a word from God, amen? Tonight will be no different. We're, we got one last service, amen, but we're trusting God to continue speaking to us. Y'all welcome Brother Hansi as he comes. Dallas Cowboys. Let's try that again. Y'all welcome, Hansi, as he comes. Quickly before I start here, so if you don't mind, just give me one second. I've got to fix what's wrong and what's right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for coming every night. Most of you were here every night. I hope you uh, got something out of the services. Remember what I preach, I preach for myself first and then for. You guys. I want to end off tonight and I want to sing a prayer um, that I want you to just agree with me that God will not take his presence and his anointing from the church. Because without the presence of God and without the anointing of God and the glory of God in the church, there will be no healings, there will be no deliverances, no salvations, nothing. We need God. And we need his presence, we need his glory the whole time. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Father God, that you will do that for us tonight. And that you will never take your glory away from us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Worship 
Come tonight, Father, help me as I end all these meetings in the name of Jesus, that we will have one more word, how to go forward, why we got to go forward, and give us the strength and the power, Holy Spirit, to be able to do that. Help me tonight as I preach, that I'll preach through the Holy Spirit and not from our flesh. The people will listen with the ears of the Holy Spirit and not from their flesh as well. In Jesus' name, I thank you. We give you praise for your perfect word. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, turn your Bible with me to the book of Corinthians. You can go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and just keep it open there. If you don't know where 2 Corinthians is, it's just after 1 Corinthians. So, See, every night I've got to have something else just to wake you guys up a little bit. Everybody say with me, I'm going forward. I'm not backwards. Let's say it three times. I'm going forward. I'm not backwards. I'm going forward. I'm not backwards. Okay. So everything in your life, every attack that the devil's thrown at you, everything that you're battling with, sickness, Salvation for your family members, finding a job, finding a husband, a wife, anything else that the devil's got on your body, you cannot give up. I just, thought this morning I said to God, I know I'm going to go forward, but, and God just said, you know, it really, and, and Pastor Wayne just said it tonight, going forward just means this, not giving up. Yeah. Because if you give up, you're going to either stay right where you are, or you're just going to go right back. And you might be on 99.9% .9 and you just give up right there. It doesn't matter where Satan stops you from getting your healing or salvation or your breakthrough or your blessing or your prosperity. If he can stop you from getting it, he'll stop you. But if I think if we just keep on focusing on the Word of God, focusing on the promises of God, which is in the Word. I'm saying it again. We aren't, you know, we're not, a, there used to be a time when people said, oh, you're just some of those name and claim Christians. And actually, you know, and we all said, no, no, we're not name and claiming, but we couldn't prove it, but we are actually naming what God has said in the Word, yeah. and we're claiming it for ourselves. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that, because if it's not in the Word, then we cannot name and claim. God never told me in, in the Word that I'm going to have a Rolls Royce. So if I name and claim a, 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 a Rolls Royce, that might just be my greed or just what I want. But that's not in the Word. So then you can tell I'm name and claiming. But if in the Word it says there's salvation and there's healing and there's deliverance and I can prosper in yeah. all things, then I'm going to name what the Word says and I'm going to claim what the Word yeah. says and make it mine. Why? Because God has paid the price for it when he died on the cross. Where's the cross? The cross. You taking the cross down? All right, you all know where the cross is. No, I'm just saying. Usually the cross is behind the, the thing on the, in, the, in the baptism. That's okay. It, it's just, just what God has said in his word. Just go and say, yes, Lord, it's mine. And be ready to say yes. Hit that deal button and say, Lord, that's mine. I'm, I'm, I'm taking it. 
So I want to encourage you tonight, not to get discouraged, not to give up. Be like a guy last night next to the pool, just keep on going and enduring in patience. Just keep on lying right next to you in your problem, and the problem's right next to you, but you cannot get it. God's going to show up. He knows what your problem is. He's going to fix it sometime. And if you, you have to die before you get it, then you'll get it in heaven in any case. So, right. But remember, don't have that attitude while I'm just going to uh, receive my healing in, in heaven and I'm, 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 I'm just going to be sick on earth. No, don't take that second best. Go for your full healing. Go for your full prize that you are running the race for. Get into the word. Speak the word. Believe the word. Remember that you speak the word because the word of God creates faith inside of you and that faith comes out of your mouth and the more you say it, the more you're going to hear it. The more you're going to hear it, the more your spirit man is going to be satisfied. That's going to produce faith. Faith is going to become the substance, the foundation, the pillar that's going to uphold your hope, your expectation, what you ask God, what you need. Remember your hope? Your expectation doesn't heal you. The faith heals you. But you, your hope and your, and your expectation, what you need is, needs faith to sustain it and carry it. Otherwise, your hope, your expectation is going to fall apart. Faith has got to be there. And the only way how you get faith is through the Word of God. Go to the promises in God's Word. Speak them. Believe them. Speak them into your body. Speak them into your situation. If you've got a financial problems, get the scriptures. Start speaking them. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Lord, you crown this year with your goodness. Your paths drip with abundance. Blessed be the Lord. He daily loads me with benefits. The God of my salvation. You know the Lord God is a sun and a shield. He gives grace and glory. And start speaking those financial scriptures. Lord, you give me power to get wealth. That's what Exodus says. God gives us power to get wealth. Speak those financial blessings, and Lord, if I pay my tithes, you see, you'll open up the windows of heaven for me. Speak them into your situation. Tell yourself, I will get out of debt. I'm not going to swipe that credit card no more. And get out of debt. You can do it. You can do the same with your healing, with your, with your marriage, with your job, with whatever need you have. And you go forward and let God get you to your promise, to the promised land. He will do it. Amen. Now some people will say, okay, and I said, God, how do I end this week? A lot of people will say, but you know, what I don't understand is why we as children of God, why we have to go through all of these attacks and stuff. Why is it not just a flick of a finger and oof, there I am, you know? And if I'm sick and I'm done, not just flick a finger, oh, thank you, Jesus, and, and I'm healed. Now that does happen. There are miracles that do happen. And, but what I've found out the hard way is that what you receive in a hurry, you can also lose in a hurry. Yeah. It's easy, easy to get your, your healing and your miracle, but it's very hard to maintain that. Mm. When that symptom comes back, boy, you can just like us give up and go backwards. You really, really, really... But what you fight for and what you go through, you appreciate far more. And when you eventually get what you had, you hold on to that. So watch out that what you receive in a quick hurry, you can also lose quickly and, and, and in a hurry. So I've just learned that sometimes God has to work with us because we're children. We, we're spiritual children. Sometimes we just want stuff because we want stuff. And we want it now. And then we lose it quicker. But whatever I've received... But fighting, man, I, I don't let go of that because that's what I've been fighting for and I've received it now and I appreciate it and I will hold on to it. So, Hansi, why do we go through all of these tribulations, all these sicknesses, all these stuff? And I read the scripture and I want you to read it with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And it'll explain why we go, why we have to go through attacks sometimes. And we don't get the attacks only for this reason, but we are going to be attacked, and we are going to go through trials. Why? Because I've told you the whole week, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal your money, steal your health, steal your, um, your, your marriage, your children, wants to destroy and kill you if he can. 
If he can wipe you out right now, the fact that you and I are still here, it's just the mercy of God. Well, 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 well I'm going to go to heaven in any case. Yeah, but if he can take you out on earth, guess what? There's no more witnessing. The more Christians he can take out, the less witnessing there is. So he doesn't mind if you're a Christian or not. He wants to just kill and steal and destroy. But Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, he says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, uh, our brother, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints who are in all Achaia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and, uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Number 3, verse 3, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. And I thought, no, man, God, thank you for this verse tonight. And God said, just, just explain this word tonight. Just let's do a little bit of a Bible study explanation here. The first thing that Paul says to the Corinthians, he says to them, blessed be the Lord God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul just blesses God. He always just, oh man, what a great God we are. What a powerful God we are. Because he's the Father of mercy. I want you to get this. God is a God of mercy, of love, of grace. And what you're going through, just like last night when he walked up to that man in the, in, in the uh, porches, he knew how long he had been laying there. He knew what sickness he had. And he knew the battle that that guy was fighting and that he couldn't get in there. And the same thing with you. Why? Because he's a God of mercy. God is not merciless towards you and I. He's not there saying, well, you guys are just messing up down there on earth. No. God loves you. He cares for you. He's got mercy to, 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 towards you. And that mercy is just, oh, come on, Lord. Uh, God is basically saying, I got you guys. I got your back. I'm holding you up. I'll never let you go. So Paul is telling the people, all right, he's a God of mercies. And he's the God of all comfort. Point number one. Paul says that God is a God of comfort. Do you know that God is a God of comfort? Yes. How is he a God of comfort? Through the Holy Spirit which is inside of you. Which, because who is the Holy Spirit? He's your comforter. He's your helper. He's your sanctifier. Your teacher. He's your empowerer. He anoints you. He's the spirit of glory around you. He's the spirit of truth that comes out of your mouth. That speaks the truth out of your mouth. But the first thing that the Holy Spirit is, and what the Holy Spirit does, is comfort you. But Hansi, how does the Holy Spirit comfort us? There's a little joke that they say, uh, uh, Mama was sick. <laughs> and Mommy said to little Johnny, Johnny, you've got to go to church this morning. Mommy's not going to church, but I want you to go sit right in front there and listen to Pastor Wayne preach, okay? And then you come home and tell Mommy what Pastor Wayne preached about. So Johnny comes in, he's five years old, he sits down right in front, listens to Pastor Wayne. After the service, he runs out around that corner into the house, says, Mommy, oh my goodness, this was the best sermon that I ever heard Pastor Wayne preach. Mommy said, well, what did he preach on? He said, Mom, you remember last year when it was winter and it snowed here and we were so cold in our, in our house? Mommy said, yeah. And he said, and we didn't have enough blankets and, 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 and hot heaters and stuff? Mommy said, yeah. He said, Mom, this year we are not going to get cold. Mom said, what? He said, well, Pastor Wayne preached, and he said that God is going to send us another comforter. <laughs> so, Mom, we're all going to have comforters for this way we went to. We're not going to get cold anymore. And Mom said, are you sure? He said, yeah. I heard him say, Jesus said that he was going to ask God, and God would send us another comforter. And all of a sudden, Mom realized, oh, okay. The little five-year-old doesn't understand what it is. But she understood that Pastor Wayne was talking about God saving us another comforter when Jesus left the earth. And his little brain thought, man, last year we got cold. Oh my goodness. But this year we're not going to get cold because guess what? We're going to each have a comforter. What does a comforter do? You put it around you and you hold it like, ooh, it's nice and warm. And that thing unfolds you. Am I right? 
say, so you can't get caught. That's exactly what God does to you when you go through a trial, when you go through cancer, when you go through a problem in your church, when you go through a financial crisis, when you have a marriage problem, whatever, trial and tribulation, Satan's throwing at you. God says, come here. Let me put my Holy Ghost around you and just hold you. And can you feel that sometimes when you're going through something? And can you feel that comfort of putting his arms around you and holding you? It's like, come on, when your little boy gets hurt when he falls on the ground and scratches his knee, what do you do? You pick him up and hold him. You comfort him. Am I right? But see, some of us don't feel that from the Holy Spirit because we're so busy moaning and complaining and griping that we don't even feel how the Holy Spirit's holding us because if he did not, we would go downhill so quickly. Just sometimes when you go through a problem, just stand still sometimes and be still and know that he is God. And just feel that comfort. Just feel that peace. Just feel that it's okay, Johnny. It's okay, David. It's okay, Wayne. It's okay, Mary, Deborah, whoever. I've got you. Just, I've got you. I'm comforting you. I'm putting my arms around you. I thought, God, you are so awesome. You are so great. He's there to comfort you. Why? The word comfort you means paraclete in the Greek. The one alongside you. When something happens, he'll never leave you, nor forsake you. He's there to help you. But don't miss him. Don't let him pass you by and he's holding you and you shake him off because you don't even know that he's holding you, all right? He's there to help you, comfort you, exhort you, advise you. In John 14, 16, Jesus said this. He said, I will pray to the Father. That's what just before he ascended. And he shall give you another comforter that he, the Holy Spirit, will abide, dwell, remain always with you forever. Why? Because Jesus was their comforter. Jesus helped them. He taught them. He, he showed them what to do. He gave them authority. He gave them power because they didn't have the Holy Spirit. He said, but when I leave, I'm going to pray to God that God will send you another comforter, the Holy Ghost. Now you will get power from him and he'll be with you forever because I've got to go back to my Father. What a promise. That same comforter is in this church tonight. He lives in every single one of you if you are born again. Because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are the temple of the Comforter. He's in China. He's in Africa. He's in Russia. He doesn't have to be in one place. What a great God we have. Oh, my goodness. People can get saved, set free, and, and, and healed wherever you go. The second thing that he says in verse uh, um, 4, who comforts us in, in verse the number one, it was, he says, he's the God of all mercies and of comfort. So he's my comforter. Number two, who comforts us in all our tribulation. So what does God put his arms around you for? Why does he do it? Like I said just now, when you go through those trials, when you go through those tribulations, when you having a hard time at your school or your job or your or wherever you are, or in church or with your family members, hey man, just open your ears, open your eyes, like we said the other night, and just know that God is there. It'll just take so much stress off, off of us. And we've got to watch out that we don't want to do this by ourselves. Because some of you sitting here, including me, we've tried to do things our way. And we cannot. It's impossible. Some things are impossible for us. We don't have the power for that. doesn't matter what power we have. God's got the power to do this. And he will show all things are possible for, for God. <laughs> so what does the word tribulations mean? In the Greek, it just means sickness. Financial problems, depression, fear, anguish, affliction, persecution, just plain simple trouble, marriage problems, addictions, anxiety, phobia, discouragement. So God is saying, listen, I'm a God of comfort. I'm there to put my arms around you, to fold you in my arms. Through all those phobias, all those discouragement, disappointments, Whatever it is, what sickness you're going through, it, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but uh, you know, I've done something and I'm going through something. I don't think God can do it. Well, then you're not saved because you don't believe God can do anything. And the Holy Spirit is not with you. Yeah, but I don't know if I, if, if I got the Holy Spirit. Then I don't think you are saved yet because when you say the Holy Spirit comes into you, you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit thereafter. But you are full with the Holy Spirit when the love and the joy and the peace comes. 
But afterwards, you've got to get baptized and get uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit to get power and authority, which God, God has given us. But how do why? Why do we have to go through this? Why does God just not comfort me? Why do we have to, why does he not just take it away? <sighs> I said, Pastor Wayne and I were talking the other day, look at the disciples when they were on earth. When they were stoned, they were put in prison. They were swooped like Jesus was, man. Why didn't God stop that? Because God is not on earth now. I told you the other night, he's given every single one of you and I the power and the authority and all the tools we need. The name of Jesus, the power of the blood, the word of God, the Holy Spirit power, angels, the armor of God, everything we need. The God of this earth, Satan, is there to blind our minds and to hurt and to steal and to kill. Jesus said, I come to give you life and he gave us life. And now we've got to fight. God, God's not going to come down to earth. If he comes down to earth and stops all of these things that happen and help the disciples, then it would be heaven. But that's why we pray. That's why we have the power of prayer and ask God's help and wisdom and knowledge so God can show us. There'll always be bad people. Remember that. Always be evil people. They were in the Bible. They always try to hurt the children of God, oppress the children of God. Always try to kill them, persecute them. And no different now. Just be glad you haven't been taken. Your Bible hasn't been taken away. You put in prison because you see Jesus. There are places like that on the earth right now. Just be glad that you can still serve God. But the bottom line is this. God says, I am going to help you. John 16, verse 33 says this. <clears throat> doesn't, if your question is, why doesn't God just... Heal us. Why does he have to take us through all the problem and the, and the time to get healed? In John 16, 33, it says, In this world, you will have trials and tribulations. But be of good cheer, he said. I've overcome them. So even if we go through it, Christ has overcome it on the cross. And when the price is paid, you've got to go and take that. And say, okay, I'm going to go through this trial, not around the trial. Nowhere in the Bible does it say God takes you over the trial, around the trial. It's always true. You've got to go through the trial to get to your blessings. You've got to go through it to get to it. That's the old saying. So come on, just don't get angry when you go through these trials and tribulations, guys. Because you can learn a lot from these things. It, that's not why... God gives it to you. God doesn't give you the trials and tribulations. God tests your faith. You can go read James. God does not trial you and tribulate you. God does not put sickness on you. I, well, some preachers say that God does that. I don't know how they can believe that God's that kind of God. To me, God is a good God. He sent his son to die on the cross for my sins and my sicknesses. So why would God make me sick so that Jesus would God and heal me? That's contradicting himself. He, he himself said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. So God cannot make you sick and then let Jesus heal you. That's his own house divided. God is a healer, not a stealer. So remember that, okay? So you just know that you are going to be attacked and you can be attacked. So that's why you put on the armor of God every day. That's why you cover yourself with the blood every day. That's why you say in Jesus' name, I come against all satanic attacks, curses, spells, witchcraft, spirits coming against me, sicknesses, and still then, they, they might still break through. But then you fight them. You fight them with everything you have. And you let the Holy Spirit comfort you through every single step that you take. Every time you pull yourself forward, going forward, you say, thank you, Holy Spirit, for your power. Because you cannot do it by yourself. You need the Holy Ghost power. Amen? Okay. <laughs> so we're going to go through the trials. We're going to go through the tribulations. So what happens in the end when you get to your victory? You've gone forward and you are now healed from cancer. Or you go forward and your marriage is saved. Or you go forward and your husband gets saved. You go forward and your children are, 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 are of, of drugs. Or whatever the, the need had, the, the need that you had, you have now. Well, thank you, Lord. I'm, I've gone forward and you helped me. Paul keeps on saying, who comforts us in all our tribulations, verse 4. So that we may be able to comfort those people who are in trouble 
with the same comfort with which we ourselves were comforted. You know what Paul is saying? He says, guys, remember this. When God is your comforter, when you go through these trials and sicknesses and attacks and depression and oppression, discouragement stuff, God's going to be right there. He's not going to let, not forsake you. He's going to comfort you right through it. So that when you get forward to the promised land that God has promised you, the healing or the deliverance or the salvation, guess what? Then you can stand up and become a witness and a testimony. And guess what's going to happen? Now you can help other people. Now you can comfort other people with the same kind of comfort that God has comforted you. What do you mean by that? If you've had cancer, guess what? And God's healed you. Now when somebody else in your church gets cancer, then you can tell them, I know what it feels like. I've been there. Am I right? You don't want to listen to me? Okay. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm listening to you. They're worried about the little boy. God, God doesn't worry about the little boy. I'm not worried about the little boy. Don't listen to me, not to the kids. All right. God wants to comfort you so you can comfort other people. Whatever problem you've been through, God doesn't comfort you so you can become comfortable afterwards. He comforts you so you can be a, come a comforter, comforter afterwards. Can I say that again? God comforts you through a situation so you can become a comforter to other people. He doesn't comfort you so you can become comfortable. Some people get healed, set free, delivered, and you never see them again. They never testify against it, and they don't help other people. But how can I comfort people? You have the Holy Spirit inside of you, and you comfort those people just like the Holy Spirit comforted you. Give them help. Talk to them. Listen to them. Speak to them. Give them scripture. Love them. Give them compassion, just like God's got compassion on you. Speak uplifting words. Encourage them. Tell them it's okay. Don't worry. Just hold on. Don't give up. That's what we're supposed to do. Stop this world, you know. Uh, I, what does the doctor say? Well, the doctor says I've got six months left. Oh, well, I know somebody that had the same kind of cancer, and they only lived three weeks. We don't need... We don't need you to say that, Miss Susie. Please don't. You are discouraging that person. She's still got hope. She's got six months to live. And, and you know somebody that had the same diagnosis, but they died within three weeks. You've just discouraged that person so much. You, even if, if you know, even if she dies after three weeks, you don't need to tell her that. You need to comfort her. And unfortunately, we got a bunch of Christians that always like to say, yeah, but did you know? Oh, my goodness. Oh, doesn't matter what people say. We speak what the Word of God says. Our job is to say, yeah, we know what you're saying, but the Word of God says you can be healed. The Word of God says you can make it through it. And we're going to stand with you and walk that extra mile and comfort them and, and pray for them. Come on. I know some people, listen, when people are, have gone through a divorce or people have lost a loved one, Sometimes they just need, or they have a problem, they just need somebody to talk to. Amen. And all you've got to do is to listen. That's right. And listen. Yeah, but man, they wear me out. But just listen. Because when you need some help, you will do the same thing. You're going to cry on somebody else's shoulder. And I just wish the church would get to a point where we don't worry about how much time we spend with people. Yeah, and there are people that can wear you out. And sometimes they have to grow up and just keep on going forward. But don't you decide when that time is. Come on. Amen. God will tell you, it's okay now. You know, these people are just wasting your time. And they're just looking for, for, for attention. But let us become those comforters, just like the Holy Spirit, is, because we have that Holy Spirit inside of us. Don't you get depressed when, 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 when things are going wrong. You know God's with you. <laughs> I like peanuts. And I one day, would, you know, what I do, I put a whole ha a handful of peanuts and then I take one of them, shoot them up in the air like this and catch them. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I must admit, I'm a good shot. I hardly miss one because I practice it so much. And one day I would hold a whole hand and I shot up every one and I caught every single one of them. I thought, man, this is too easy now. So I had one peanut left in my hand. I put it like this and I started shaking it like this. I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this thing and whack, 
I was so high, I don't know how high is the sea if I can catch it. And while I'm shaking the sea, I'm saying, God, you better help me, man, because I don't want to you know, mess up my, my record here now. I mean, I've caught every single one. I'm going to throw the sea up in the air. And the next time when I heard God say to me, uh, what's in your hand? I said, it's a peanut. He said, why are you shaking it? I said, well, I'm just shaking it because I want to shake it. He said, why did you drop it on the floor? I said, no way. I want to throw this thing up in the air and catch it. He says, you know, you just like that peanut. I said, what, you calling me a peanut guy? <laughs> he said, no, you just like that peanut. I said, what? He said, when life throws you around like this and shaking you around like this, I said, there's been times in your life that life situations have shaken you and, you and that poor peanut doesn't know where it's going. He doesn't know you're going to throw it up. He doesn't know you're not going to let it drop. And sometimes you've been like that too. I said, yeah, God, I have. He said, when life situations are shaking you and you don't know if you're going to fall on the ground or you're going to be thrown up or air or what's going to happen to you. I said, yeah. He says, but just like you don't want to drop that peanut, so always remember that my hands are around you. Even if life's shaking you around, I'm not going to drop you. You come into me. I'm going to be, you're going to become part of me. I will, you will get in me. I will be in you. Christ in me. Christ, uh, uh, me in Christ. I said, oh, Lord, thank you. Yeah. Stupid little peanut example. But that just made me feel so good. doesn't matter how life and people shake you around and uh, do evil to you. Just you know that God will never drop you. He's always there to comfort you. But God needs other people to be comforted as well. And he needs you and I to be witnesses of how good God was and how good God is. Yeah. And after Jeanette was so sick, where we really realize there's so many people that have got so many sicknesses and that almost died. And we can talk about it, but we can tell people how good God was and comfort them. It's okay. Just keep on going. Don't you dare give up. You know, we, we're almost like ambassadors. I think it's, you don't have to go there. I think it's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 says, we are ambassadors for Christ. Read, turn there quickly. You might as well read this with me. We, we, we got to be like ambassadors, and I'm, and, I, and I'm ending off. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. It says, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God was pleading through us, we implore on you, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he knew him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness. It says, we are ambassadors for Christ as though as God is pleading, working to us. And, that, and that's where we are. And you all know what an ambassador is, am I right? An American ambassador to Russia is not a Russian. He's an American. He just goes, lives there, and then he shows Russia the image of America. He's an ambassador for the American people. So he doesn't eat, drink, talk, act like them, he stays in America. And the Russians know that these people are Americans because they eat American, they look American, they speak American, and yeah, he can talk Russian, so he can contact with them, but he doesn't become a Russian. He stays an American. And we are children of God. We are ambassadors for Christ Jesus. Amen. So we got to be in this world, not of this world. We cannot become like the world. We cannot talk like the world, act like the world, speak like the world. We've got to stay ambassadors for Christ, children of God, saved, set free, following the example of Jesus Christ. And, 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 and like it says there, that we, that because Christ took our sin upon him, so we could become the righteousness of God and we could show the people who Jesus is. How? So that's how we comfort people. We say, let me comfort you. Because you can comfort people sorry, through the power of the Holy Spirit. If you try and comfort people, you'll give up within one day or two days. But through the Holy Spirit inside you, that's why I always tell people, you don't have to know scriptures. You don't have to uh, quote the Bible like Jesus does or some of the theologians do. You just be Jesus to people. People want to see God. They want to see that God is real. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Amen. Become ambassadors for Christ Jesus, guys, and just be Jesus. I love it when people, hey, when my wife is so sick, 
Am I going to put that on Facebook? I'm telling you, within five minutes, I had so many phone calls, so many texts, and for the whole 10 days while she was in ICU, busy dying, there was people that showed me love like I've never seen. Some pastors drove from Canton to come and see me. Some pastor drove from Fort Worth. I'm not saying because Pastor Wayne didn't drive there that he wasn't praying for me. They could do that. But it just showed you that God used people that was available. But every single person that I spoke to, every person that texted me, called me, emailed me, it was such an uplifting that I basically didn't have to do something like, because my arms were lifted up by other Christians, comforting me through it. Yes. And all I knew, although I knew she could die any moment, that comfort of the people saying, Brother Hansi, many, many people said this to me, Brother Hansi, we know you know the word. I, go, I know I know the word, but I need to hear it as well. Yes. And I need to hear it from somebody that's not a preacher telling me, and just remember what God's word says, by his stripes, Jeanette is healed. Come on, that's, that scripture is as old as, I mean, everybody knows that scripture. But you know what? I still needed to hear it. I still needed those comforting words. I must have heard that scripture a thousand times in those ten days. And people, everybody just told me that scripture. I don't care. It comforted me so much just to know that there's people that have got me. Yes, amen. That are holding me saying. And some of those preachers... I, I, mean, I, I was, I was uh, ministering in Tennessee, and I had about five churches in about an hour radius. All five of those ministers were there every single day, and their wives. And they would come in and hug me and just hold me. Sometimes I cried. Sometimes they cried. It doesn't matter. Why? Because Jeanette was busy dying. The doctor said, she's not going to make it. Who wants, to, who wants to lose your wife? But I mean, they're just the comfort. And I'm telling you something, if the church starts doing that again, you'll see a different church. Oh, I'll, I'll remember you in prayer. No, you won't. You lie. You're not going to remember people in prayer. I would meet somebody in, in Walmart. Hi, how are you doing, Brother Hansi? Uh, hi. Do you remember me? Uh, yeah, I remember you. Just remember where you from? And then I'm lying. I don't remember. But you're a preacher. I know. And God told me one day, he said, you're lying to that person. You don't remember them. I said, God, how do I tell them? No, I don't know you. He said, it doesn't matter. You tell them no, you don't know them. I don't remember you. I see so many people. So now I tell them. No, I'm sorry. I, don't, I can't remember you. You look familiar, but I'm, I'm from Brothers Wayne Church. Oh. Yeah, all right, sorry, man. Oh, yeah, you that little blonde that turned 50 years old, that thing, yeah. What's your name again? Devin. De oh, oh, Devin, yeah, hi, Devin, yeah. Sorry, Devin, no. now I remember you. I mean, what, are you going to feel bad because I said that? No. So now I do that. How are you doing, Devin? Oh, not good, brother. Well, I'm not speaking this over you to take an example. The doctor said I got cancer. I got breast cancer. Would you remember me in prayer, Brother Hansi? And you know what I would do? Yes, Devon, I'll remember you in prayer. Have a good day, sister. Bye-bye. Give love to Pastor Wayne and them, and I walk. I never pray for her. Why not? Because I forget. Did I do it on purpose? No. But it's such a pretty say to comfort people by saying, oh, I remember you in prayer. But, 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 but most of us don't remember them in prayer. So God said to me, I said, what do you want me to do? He said, pray for her right there. So now if Devon said, Brother Hansi, the doctor said I've got breast cancer, would you remember me in prayer? No, Devon, can I pray for you right here? Yeah. In Walmart, yeah. give me your hands. And like some of you have heard me pray, I don't say, oh Lord, take my I say, cut your cancer spirit. In Jesus' name, I lose you from Devon. And the people in Walmart do. <laughs> I don't care. There's no sign in Walmart saying we're not allowed to pray. Come on, amen. Right. Until they do that, then we'll go outside. So God told me to start comforting people immediately. Because she, why did she tell me that? Because she needs comfort. She needs to know that God can heal her. So I'll pray for you right there and uplift you and encourage you. Say, come on, baby, just hold on, okay? You can fight this. Is, is the church praying for you? Yep, well, I'm just agreeing with the church. 
But it, it's not you saying, I remember you, and then she thinks, I wonder if you did pray for me. No. We can start praying for people, walking with them. And then, then you know what I do is I call Pastor Wayne. How's Devin doing? Oh, did you? Yeah, I met her in, in Walmart, and, and I prayed for her as well. Then you'll say, oh, you're doing much better, and so forth. So I just cancel that over you. you. You will never have breast cancer. I'm just taking an example, okay, in Jesus' name. But that's how I learned that we start praying and talking to people and lifting them up right there where you meet them. That's the best way, way of doing it. And if you possible, you guys in church, hey, find out. I wish the church would have a different attitude when they come to church. I wish they would have an attitude, like I said the other night, like the woman with the issue of blood. I'm expecting God to heal. I'm expecting God to do miracles. Uh, th there's nothing wrong with me. Oh, yes, there is something wrong with me. But when I get you, I'm going to get healed. When I get you, God's going to hear my prayer. And come to church with a giving attitude. Not just I want, I want, I want, I want attitude. Because a lot of Christians just come here, I want, I want from God. If we come to church with a giving attitude, give our praise, give our worship, give our tithes, give our time. Before Pastor Wayne even walks up here, the church people should be going around, how are you doing? How are you doing? And, and, you know, and, and talking to people and finding out, just listen, fellowship. That's why we have church. Don't forsake the fellowship of the saints. Talk to each other, and quickly you'll find out that somebody else has gone through the same problem that you went two weeks ago, went through the same problem. You can say, oh my goodness, I've been there last two weeks, I've had the same problem. Can I pray for you? And people should be praying for each other before the service even starts. Amen. And you'll see a whole different church. So comforting each other and hearing each other's problems. Do you know what our big problem is? We're afraid to tell each other what's wrong with us. Because we're afraid of the, 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 the gossip afterwards. Oh, did you hear what happened to Sister Devon? Oh, did you know what she did? Oh, oh. Let, let, let's just stop that childish Christianity. Let's become mature, grown-up Christians and start listening to each other and praying for each other and comforting each other and be ambassadors for Christ Jesus in this world and showing people in each other what Jesus Christ is really about. And you'll see a whole different church. Then... When you go through the trials and, and, and the tribulation, next time, when something hits you hard, no problem. I know I'm going to get through this. God's got me. I've got my brothers and my sisters. They're comforting me. The Holy Spirit's comforting me. I'm just going straight through this thing. I'm just fighting that fight. Open your mouth. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get healed. My marriage is going to be saved. My kids will, will be off drugs. And I'm going to prosper financially. doesn't matter how long it takes. I'm going to endure. I'm going to keep on going. Don't you stop talking. The moment you stop speaking it, the devil gets that discouragement tool in there, you're going to go backwards. Keep on saying, I'm going to make it. And you comfort each other and you go forward. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Give God a clap tonight. Come on. Come on, stand with me.